on this episode of Counting Down, our picks for the top 12 rock song intros. That's right, rock song intros. That part of the song that just comes right in from the beginning, grabs you, pulls you in, doesn't let you go. Lots of drummers, thankfully, on this episode. We're giving some love to the drummers. Have you ever given uh, some love to the drummers? Someone's got to do it. All right, well, there you go. Let's get right into it. Lots of songs to go over. At number 12, what do we got? That is going to be the ultimate cowbell song. Not Boys to Cult, it's Mountains, Mississippi Queen. Mississippi Queen, a true rock classic. Absolutely. I love that song. That, for me, that when I think cowbell songs, I think Mississippi Queen, I think the Stones, Honky Tonk Woman. I don't think Blue Oyster Cult, because uh, to me, that, that almost could be a wood, wooden block, almost. It doesn't have, it's buried low in the mix, it's not... But thanks to Saturday Night Live. Oh, it's made it iconic. It's infamous now. It is, as yeah. far as most people are concerned, the cowbell song. Just because it is an incredibly funny skit. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I, I mean, I love Cowbell and Rock. I always think thought it was a cool thing added on. I remember when I was playing, I had two of them. Different, different Cowbell Two sounds. Cowbells. Two Cowbells. <laughs> Double the Cowbell. Double the Cowbell. But what a great song. Classic rock anthem, for sure. Uh, I love Leslie West's voice. Very bluesy, soulful rock. I love singers like that. And uh, the riff is just killer. It's a great song. It's literally like two and a half minutes of just kick-ass rock. I don't know what a Mississippi Queen is, but I can use my imagination. I've never had that. Sounds like you'll know when it happens. That's what he says. You know what he means, so He's letting you know. you'll know. Yeah. <laughs> so there you go. Great stuff. Love that song. Miss Mississippi Queen from Mountain coming in at number 12. Brings to number 11. At number 11 on the list. Not a big fan of this mm -hmm. band. Not a big fan of the singer. And I know that's sacrilegious. Some people are going to get... Can see about it, but nah, it's not. But I love this song. It's my favorite song from the band, Megadeth, Holy Wars. That intro is absolutely killer. Yeah. Oh, it's one of my favorite intros ever. Drum intro. I mean, I just love the riff, the the way the two come in. I love Nick Menza. I love Marty Friedman. The two of them in the in the same band was like lightning in a bottle. For sure, that was definitely the best era of that band. Uh, I love that record. I love that whole time period. Um, the records they did are just they're the best stuff Megadeth ever did. If you disagree, you're wrong. Mm -hmm. You can let me know in the comment box down below. But what a great intro, great song. Loved playing that thing. Nick Menza was a total beast. Absolutely. Love it. Love it. So there you Love go. It. At number 11. Bring us to number 10. What do we got? That's going to be Twisted Sister. Because we're not going to take it. It's another one with the cowbell. Yeah. You know, that little intro thing with the, the cowbell. That's a big one, too. Yeah, there's a lot of cowbells in these. I think, I don't even think we planned this, but it's happening. Yeah. There's a lot of cowbell in these intros. I know, that's, that's another one. I mean, it, I almost think that that is more important than the riff. Yeah. I think you remember that intro. Yeah, you hear that, that drum intro and yeah. you know exactly what song it is. You could hear just that piece by itself, you'd automatically know. You don't need the guitar riff. Exactly. You don't need anything. That thing is such a huge part of the song. It's true, and even if you're not sure by that point, D comes in and lets you know what the hell's up. Absolutely. Immediately after. You should have got credit on, in writing, for yeah. sure. You know what I mean? Absolutely should have got drum writing credit for that thing right there, because it's such a huge part of the song. And who knows if it would have been the same without it, because it's huge. Exactly. The part it's... where the drums are playing, D's fucking in the thing, all spinning around all crazy. <laughs> I love it. Not a big Twisted Sister fan, but man, what a great intro and a sorely missed drummer. Absolutely. Yes. Great stuff. All right, there you go. At number 10, it brings to number 9. At number 9, this is the one that 
as a rock drummer, you kind of got to learn this. It's important. This, it's necessarily, it's a rite of passage. It is. This separates the good cover rock drummers from the bad cover <laughs> rock drummers. And it's hot for teacher, which we've all been, by Van Halen. My teachers were all kind of frumpy and middle-aged, so I can't relate to the song. I can. Hi, Miss St. Angelo, 8th grade. Thank you. Thank you very much. I, myself, was half a teacher, um, so I can relate to the song. But what a great drum intro, nonetheless. Great, great intro. Yeah. And it, it's just like, it's got that, I don't even know what you would call it, but it's just like, it's so cool. And that's another one that you just hear it and you know exactly what it is. Yeah, it's it's almost, it, it, like it's an barely starting. rock. Yeah, yeah. it's it's <laughs> very, it's it's very, uh, I don't know, it's 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 a little more jazzy than rock. Right. You know, that okay. intro. It's it's very unique for, for that kind of a song. Usually those types of songs are like 4-4 four, four timing. It's just like four on the floor and like that's it. Usually rock intros like that. So for yeah. Alex to have done something that's kind of, uh, you know, different and, and unique in a rock song like that, where it's literally just a sex song, is uh, just pretty cool. But it's, it's a great, great intro for it. Love it. Brings you right in the song, sets the tone, perfect rock intro. That's right. Gets you half a teacher. So good <laughs> stuff. Coming in at number nine, Van Halen, half a teacher. Brings to number eight. And number eight, what do we got? That is going to be Quiet Riot with Mental, mental Health. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, but this is where what? you've got the guitars, the drums yeah. working together, and it's just that that riff. For me, that's the it's the riff. Here. It's the riff. Yeah. The riff. It's is not so the drums here. here. I mean, yeah. they they add huge because they are big, you know, loud drums in the mix. You got the eight those eighties cannon drums, but that riff, you know, is just huge. And then Kevin Dubrow coming out with that scream in the beginning. Yeah. It's just like. This is what's Fuck. up. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, this is what's up. That is just absolutely huge. I think that's one of the greatest rock intros of all time. Oh, absolutely. I it love is. that intro. It's Definitely just is. killer. Like, it, I mean, I like the song. I do. I like yeah. the song a lot. But the intro is just oh, yeah. like, oh my God. It's one of those perfect cases of when you hear just the beat, the first couple seconds of a song, you just know it's going to be great. Yeah, that's the kind of song like you could have pictured like some... WWF wrestler in the 80s coming out to <laughs> before he like went and kicked Hulk Hogan's ass or something you know he'd come out with that you know yeah. that's just that kind that'll of that'll get you amped to kick someone's ass it does I'm thinking about kicking this camera over right now it's just like <laughs> ugh, what a great great song love it but that intro is just incredible Metal Health from Quiet Riot we actually should have put that higher on the list but there it is at number 8 brings to number 7 and number 7 on the list here's another one a rite of passage for rock drummers but it's overall, it's not just the drummer on this one. That's Creeping Death from Metallica.
love, love, love that song. Oh, yeah. I mean, early Metallica is untouchable. It is. It so really good. Is. There's a reason why that band is so massively regarded. It's definitely not for Load. It's for stuff like that. <laughs> It, it is. was my kind of a dark <laughs> period for the band. But they had already proven themselves so heavily at that point that yeah. it, you could put out whatever the fuck you want after I, that. Well, they, they've kind of done that. Kind of done that. <laughs> you know, they did the releases, you know, after that weren't <laughs> great. But they had already solidified themselves as rock yeah. metal gods. And Absolutely. The early stuff speaks volumes. It still, it still stands as yeah. being incredible for its time. And the fact that they were just young guys coming up with that shit is just just awesome classic stuff what a great song though that was one of the ones that like you know i played that song so many times in so many basements all over the place because that was one of the ones that yeah. everybody was you know creeping death it was like yeah all right <laughs> I was like, you're in the band <laughs> that's one of those songs you know it's one of the songs like everybody seemed to know back then that and for whom the bell tolls you know two huge intros and we could have we we were going back and forth whether it was going to be for whom the bell tolls or creep and death but creep and death yeah for whom the bell tolls has a killer intro as well but creep and death is just yeah wow. i know it's more powerful yeah i think so that's why i put it on the list which one would you have put? Let us know in the comment box below. So there you go, number seven. Brings to number six. At number six. Now this one's a vocal intro. Yes, we're giving it to the singer on this give one. Give it to the singer. And if we're going to give it to any singer... Although, uh, you know... Some good ones. Th th across the board. This is musicianship universally. Yes. But it is the it vocal... It does technically start off musically. Yeah. But then it's those vocals that come in that are just like... Take it to the next From level. another fucking planet. And that is Immigrant Song. From Led Zeppelin. From Led Zeppelin. Absolutely, that's my favorite Zeppelin song. I love the hell out of that song. Always have, yes. always will. John Bottom, an incredible drummer. Robert's voice right there is just like, that's the coolest thing I think he ever sang, ever. Yeah. And there's just this phenomenal live version. It was in mm. the, the DVD set that they released. You can find it online on YouTube now. Uh, it's like an outdoor concert. Yeah, it's like a big did. stadium. Yeah, kind and of it's thing. just, it looks 8 millimeter ish yeah. but then it's got a live version of that, and that just completely kills when it comes in. It's yeah. ridiculous how fucking kick-ass Like, you can't imagine what it would is. be like to have been there for it. Yeah, so powerful. What a powerful song. I love everything about it. It's just got that, like, Norwegian Viking sound. Mm, it does. I just love it. And it's such a quick song. It just comes in, kick your ass, and it's done. It's just awesome. I love everything about it. Symphony X did a killer version of it. Russell Allen. Just gonna, <laughs> just gonna mention Russell Allen right there. Incredible. But I love it. Immigrant Song Led Zeppelin coming in number six. What an amazing intro. Awesome stuff. Amazing. All right. Brings to number five. <laughs> At number five on the list, here's another one. This one, gotta go the singer on this one. Yeah. Yeah. Number of the Beast. Iron Maiden. Just what I saw in my old dreams. Was the reflections of my woman staring back at me? Cause in my dreams, it's always there. The evil face that twists my mind and brings me to despair. Iron Maiden's going to make this list. They've had a lot of really great rock intros. Tons of them. Tons of them. But that one, I mean, this was another one where we were trying to decide between this and Run to the Hills. The two of them, mm, Run to the Hills is a huge one too. It was tough. But Number of the Beast comes in and then when just, Bruce Dickinson comes in with that scream at the beginning, it's just like, oh shit. <laughs> you know I mean? It's just like, it's yeah. It's about to happen. It's just awesome. What a great yeah. intro. Great band. That's just an incredible time for them too, you know, just, the band was just on fire back then. So many great albums had yet to be made at that point, just a prime period for the band and just 
completely awesome and what an awesome intro. Absolutely. You know, so I don't know. There's another one. Would you have put that or Run to the Hills? Let us know. Put down that in the comment box below. But that's what we picked at number five, Number of the Beast. That brings us to number four. And at number four, what do we got? The Mighty Slayer. With Rain yes. Blood. Tough one. Slayer, yeah. so many killer intros. War Ensemble is one of my absolute favorites. They've got a lot of them. I uh, there's a million of them, but that that one, oof, you know, I like oh, yeah. seasons in the It's Abyss scary and it just like it just lets you know some scary shit's about to go down. I know. I like the Angel of Death intro. Yes. I, I it, that's a tough one, but yeah, Raining Blood, what a huge intro song. Oh, absolutely. You know, it's just it's ominous. And then when it comes in, it's just insane and just unbelievable. And Slayer, what an incredible band. Uh, they're going to be one that's sorely missed for sure. Definitely sent the benchmark for a lot of drummers. Dave yeah. Lombardo, what a ridiculous drummer. Ah, we're ridiculous. Yeah. Ridiculous. Love him. Love him. Love the band. Just everything about it. Killer. Great time for that band. Raining Blood from Slayer coming in at number four. Which Slayer one would you have put on? I'm sure some of you are going to go, no way, it should have been this. Let us know in the comment box. Brings to number three. At number three, this one right here. This was a split tie down the middle, yeah. so it's Kiss, Love Gun. Or Creatures of the Night. We couldn't decide. I yeah. couldn't decide because I had to put Eric Carr on this list. He belonged there. I love the intro to Creatures. Mm -hmm. Right from when it comes in, those gigantic drums is just huge and powerful and just kicks so much ass. I love it. But you got to give credit to Love Gun because yeah. it's like so memorable, so iconic. And it's like, I still see bands and there's, I mean, huge bands. I, I've seen Johnny Kelly and the, you know, Danzig set with the Love Gun intro. I've seen so many people use that, you know, little, I've seen Mike Portnoy do it in some of his drum solo things, <laughs> which is crazy. But, um, so huge, so influential, so mm. iconic. Just what a great drum pattern in that song. So, just so identifiable to the yeah. song. It's almost another one where the drums are literally just as important yes. as everything else. Absolutely. It's not just a straight drum beat. It's that little, you know, the little things that Peter did in there that just added so much to the song. So you got to give credit to that one, but you cannot give some credit to Eric Carr with Creatures of the Night. So we tied him at number three. So that brings us to the number two spot. And at number two, what do we got? That is going to be one of the coolest intros. Ever. Ever. And that is MC5 with Kick Out the Jams. Motherfucker. Yeah. And right now, right now, right now it's time to pick out the jams, motherfucker! <laughs> what a way to start a song. First of all, that song is criminally underrated. That that's one band of the greatest rock songs of all time. Criminally underrated. Yes. They are one of those bands that's just beyond, you know, just beyond underrated. Yes. And uh, that song's just incredible. But yeah, I mean, to start that that way, come out, it just lets you know something's about to happen, and yeah. it does. And then like this killer riff it kicks explodes. in, and it just is like. 
it explodes. That song just, it's an explosion right from the beginning. What an awesome song. Great intro. Love that band. MC5, just such a killer band. Love them. Uh, at number two. So that brings us to the number one spot. At number one, this one, I would argue this song to the death as being the greatest intro song that ever existed. Not just from being a drummer, but just because I think there's never been a song that's had more powerful of an intro ever in the history of rock. And that is Painkiller from Judas Priest. one of the greatest rock metal songs ever. Yeah. It's got everything. It's got incredible drums, incredible vocals, incredible guitars, incredible bass. Like it is like you think you know your shit? Yeah. Whatever instrument or if you're a vocalist, you can do that song. Yeah. You're on a different plane than everyone else. Yeah, that's a, that's a benchmark <laughs> song for sure. I mean, it's definitely definitely my favorite Judas Priest song. Mm. Um, but just what a way to start a song. So powerful, so just impactful. It just comes in and just immediately. It's it's unbelievable. What an amazing song. Could rave about it all day. But that's it. For us, that's the number one song for intros, rock intros right there. Absolutely. Judas Priest, Painkiller. So that's it. That's our picks for 12 of the best rock intros. What one would you have put on the list? We want to know, so put it right down there in that box below. Ring her bell to uh, get notifications to the channel. <laughs> Click right there on Floating Pumpkin to subscribe. And we'll see you soon in another episode here on Dark Ride.